one of the very first videos that I did was a how to start a successful city with SimCity. And it is still one of my most uh, highly watched videos, which, which shows that there's, there's a lot of interest in playing this game and how to get a good start. What I wanted to do is I wanted to revisit the concept of how to start a city. That video, because it was at the beginning of me doing videos, there were lots of questions that have come since then that I want to incorporate into a video. And I also want to do a video, a beginner's guide video that instead of a long form, zero edits, I want to do edits so that we're getting to uh, all of the important parts uh, of, of starting a city. For those that may not have uh, a, a very long time, they want to jump in and they want to get started with the city and they need they need some assistance. That's what this uh, video is for. So they can kind of go hand in hand. You can watch this video, get a city started. Uh, but if you're wanting to sit back and watch and enjoy the start of a city, you've got that one as well. And I think this should be enjoyable to watch also yeah, uh, for those that are not wanting a quick start guide, but they just want to watch me get started with the city. But let's get started. Uh, that first city that I did, I was looking at city plots that contained oil because I was going into the oil. Let's just get a city started. This is solely about starting a city. If you want to specialize in something, I've got plenty of videos on that, but this is just a beginner's guide, a quick start to getting into SimCity and starting a city. You can pick any city plot that you want. However, if you are new to the game, uh, if you've been having some challenges, the one thing, the two things that I would say that you want to look for is you want a city plot that has plenty of water. It does not have to be completely full, but uh, lots of water and lots of wind. Those two things, if you've got a city plot with those two things in abundance, that's going to help you. Once you load up your city plot, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pause the game. Now that we are paused, let's go take a, just a brief look at the user interface just in case you've not played this at all and you need just a brief, quick overview of, of your controls. Left-hand side, you'll see it in red. In the middle, it says City View. That's going to be your primary view and it's going to show you your primary icons that you're going to be using the most. Above that, one layer up is Region View. If you click on Region View, it's going to show you the entire region, all of the city plots within that region. Above it is for your Great Work site. I, I have other tutorials that cover the Great Work. For this particular tutorial, we will not be covering the Great Work. You can click back to City View Right below City View is your City Specialization. For this video, we will not be going into a specialization. We are just getting the basics of a city started. Along the row here, you've got roads, your zones, power, water, sewage, Government, waste, fire, health, police, education, transit, parks, disasters. To the right, you've got your bulldoze tool. tool. Right below bulldoze is your data map. This is going to show you information on different aspects of the city. Your IC, RCI, residential demand, commercial demand, industrial demand, your population panel, your city budget, 
the name of your city. This smiley face shows your approval rating and then your time controls. The first two things that you want to do is you want to go over to your data and you want to look for wind. Wind is right here. You click on wind. The very first thing that you're going to want to do, no matter how many cities you do, you want to start out with an idea of where the wind is blowing. This is important because your industrial buildings will carry pollution and the wind will bring that pollution in, a di in the direction that the wind is blowing. So this already tells you where you're going to be putting your industrial buildings. You want your industrial buildings downwind so that you're not running into any health issues. Then you want to click on water and you want to look at your water table. So you can see we've got a nice dark area of water here. So that already tells you on the early portion of the game, water is going to be here. Industry is going to be here. In order to save money, you want to start out with a dirt road. That is going to be your most economical way of getting started with your city. Or one of the most important things, and I cannot stress this enough, is the importance of traffic. Good traffic flow into and out of your city. So one excellent way of good traffic flow into and out of your city is by bringing traffic in and out via a roundabout. With roads, you can do roads in a straight line. You can create a square. You can do an arched road. You can do curvy roads, basically freehand, and your circle roads. So using circle, I just created a roundabout. I'm going to go to arched and let's do a dirt road from the entrance to the roundabout. This entrance to your city is critical. This is basically the lifeblood of your city. So you want to be careful about how you set this up. You will see videos in which especially early videos, you will see videos in which a person will start out by drawing roads literally at the entrance of the city. So what you have is you have created an intersection at the entrance of the city. The most important thing that I can stress at the beginning of a city is not to do that make it easy for the traffic to get in and out of your city let's take the dirt road let's do straight and let's just do a couple of blocks when you do a line you will see that the game will give you a, a guide for how to do your next set of roads. One of the things that you want to try to avoid, it will give you the option of making squares like this. What, you're, what you will run into is you're gonna have a lot of intersections close together. So early on, you want to avoid doing that early on you can do dead-end roads as you're getting this city up and running so we already know that the wind is blowing in this direction so this tells us that we have created an area for our residents and let's do a straight line in this direction straight line
it may not look like much, but that is a good starting point for your city. We now need to get services set up. There are three important services that your city is going to need to get started out with. If you look down at the bottom, the game gives you a hint as to how you want to start this process and continue out this process. You will see power, water, and sewage are your first three icons. And you can really, as you're moving along, start to follow the icons in this direction and in the order of importance. So let's start with water. And as you can see, it doesn't let me place water or it doesn't let me place anything. Well, you have to let the game start. Then it will allow you, it will tell you that you can start the process. Once you do that, if you want to pause again, you can definitely do that. You can pause. Let's go to water. And right here, right where it's dark. So that's your first item water and you don't have to go it, it, these three items in whatever order you want to do it in you want to do wind power because it's economical let's put down wind it does not pollute but let's keep it in our industrial area and then let's click on sewage and our sewage outflow pipe the sewage outflow pipe is so polluting, you, you can even see that it gives you an indicator of the wind. That's, an, that's a sign that you're dealing with something quite polluting. Those are your three primary items. I know the temptation is, is strong to want to create a ready-made city with lots of different items. You want to resist that. Let's go to our zones, and we want to put down residential zones. And let's put down industry. Your largest amount of zones is going to be residential. Your second is going to be industrial. A small amount in the early game is going to be commercial. You do not need a lot of commercial in the early part of the game. If you will look at the zones, you will see that I have not zoned on the roads leading to my various neighborhoods. So the road coming in from the highway, the roundabout, and leading to my residential and industrial areas. Those roads do not have zones. I do not want to zone because once buildings are developed there, the game is going to look at those buildings as intersections and that's gonna start a backup or a potential backup within your city. So it may not look like much, but this is the start of your city, and then you can hit play. If you are new to the game and you're just starting out, I highly recommend not going fast. You've got the option of turtle speed, llama speed, cheetah speed. Number one, Llama Speed will allow you to enjoy the game at a much more relaxed pace and any potential issues, you're going to see them coming before they become major issues. But we've got people moving in. We've got some commercial areas. And we've got the beginnings of our industry. People have arrived at the power plant it is spinning, so it is now powering the city. When you want to look at that information, you can see 
how the road is turning yellow. So wherever the road is yellow, the power is working its way to that area. Same thing for water. Water is working its way through the city. Same thing for sewage. Sewage is heading towards the outflow pipe. When you want to monitor your services, if you click on, say, power, over here, you've got the arrow. So at a glance, you can see that you're in the green. To get even more information, if you hover your cursor, you will see what the city needs and the capacity. The same thing holds true for water. So not only can you look and at a glance see that it's in the green, but you can hover your cursor and get an idea of what the city needs and the capacity of the water pump, sewage, how much sewage the city is producing, and the capacity. Overall, the residents that are moving in are generally happy. We're at a 60% approval rating and it is going up. Happiness is based upon being able to get needs met on a daily basis. Residents of the city, from the moment that they move in, their primary goal is they want to, in the morning, your residents want to be able to leave home, go to work, in an industry or a commercial location. They want to collect a paycheck at the end of the day. They want to be able to go back home and either on the way home or go home and leave, they want to be able to go shop or go to a park. And then they want to be able to complete their day back at home. That is the happiness loop for your residents. If your residents can do that, if they can get up in the morning, go to work, collect a paycheck, after work, have fun at a park or at a shop and make it back home, then they will be happy and they will pay taxes. Your commercial location in the morning, if employees can show up and open up a commercial location. And if in that business day, people can make it to that commercial location and shop at the end of the day, the commercial location will be happy and it will pay taxes. Your factory. At the beginning of the day, your factory needs people to show up to produce the goods needs to be able to send those goods out and at the end of the day if people can show up produce goods and they can send the goods out at the end of the day then your industry will be happy and it will pay taxes that makes transportation that makes traffic flow for residents commercial and industry critical for happiness we have now unlocked our town hall. Once we place town hall, that will allow us to unlock more things. The town hall needs to get to a certain level to upgrade from town hall to city hall. So as you can see, we have, we have spent some funds to get started with the city we are bringing in an hourly rate so we have power and this is what power this is what we're spending on power this is what we're spending on water this is what we're spending on sewage and this is what we're spending on government on that town hall when you look over at taxes the only tax control that we have 
at this time is for low wealth residential. I have a tutorial that goes into great detail about the tax rate. At this point, what you're going to want to do is set your tax rate at 12%. When we get to City Hall and more tax controls, I will briefly go over the taxes. But for right now, to give yourself the best start, set your taxes at 12%. And you can see we're bringing in a nice profit compared to what we're spending. So to keep the city running, we're spending 480 simoleons an hour and we're bringing in 2,208 simoleons per hour. We have the option of taking out bonds. We do not need to do that just yet. Our population, we have 420 residents. In detail, you can click on detail and it will give you an indication that shows we have, of those 432 people, 288 are eligible to work. Now we're at 292. Of the factories that we have and of the commercial locations that we have, we have 105 low wealth job opportunities and 132 medium wealth job opportunities. So we have opportunities for jobs. At this particular time, your worker information is your primary chart that you want to consult. Shoppers, industrial freight, students, tourists, homeless, those are all secondary to your worker data. It may not be part of the big three, power, water, and sewage. But as we work our way from left to right, we've done power, water, sewage, government. The next tab is waste disposal. It is very important that you keep an eye on waste disposal. It's very important that you do this relatively soon after you start a city. A weight garbage dump is 9,000 simoleons. It's 300 simoleons an hour, so we can afford it. It is garbage. If you see the wind indicator, it's telling you that this also needs to be something that is placed downwind so that we are not carrying any germs, disease, pollution towards the residents. Our population is going up. We do have available jobs. Let's go ahead and let's get down more residents. So let's extend out our road. Let's actually extend it out this way. As I'm doing roads, one of the things that you will notice, I'm trying to avoid four-way intersections. The people the simulation, the residents of a city struggle mightily with four-way intersections. T intersections are fine for the most part, but four-way intersections I try to stay away from. I know the urge is strong to put down lots of services and to get schools, education, buses, and things of that nature down. That is a way that you could potentially get yourself into financial trouble. The game, especially your first city, the simulation is going to be quite friendly up until roughly 1,000 residents. 1,000 residents is where you want to start thinking about your next set of services Fire, health, police. Going from left to right, you'll see fire is first. Fire is, of the three, the most important. I'm not saying that the others are not important, but fire is your most important. I am not going to put fire directly on this road. Let's do an offshoot. 
but I would like for fire to be relatively close to my industry as opposed to close to residence. So let's put down a fire department. And the fire department is 20,000 simoleons. We have 19,543. We do not have enough money for fire. There is absolutely nothing wrong with taking out a bond, a $25,000 bond. It is 173 simoleon per hour, so we can, we can absorb that. When you place your fire station, you only need right now the initial fire truck, yet you do want to click on edit and you will see here the fire alarm. Fire trucks are dispatched twice as fast. 3,000 simoleons, 75 simoleons an hour. It is well worth it for the faster response time. So as I said, the game is forgiving up to about 1,000 residents. We are at 1,500 residents, so we've got our fire. Our next thing that we are gonna need to think about is health. As you can see right now, we have zero deaths. We do not have anybody sick. That is not going to last forever, so it is time to start thinking about health. We have just a bit of funds, so I'm going to let more tax income come in. But the next thing that we're going to want to put down is health. Where you place your health is completely up to you. Most of your health issues are going to come from your industrial area. So a good location for your first health location is potentially close to industry. So the clinic is 20,000 simoleons. It's 400 simoleons an hour. We can afford it. You see that red box? That's letting you know that there is a module that if you place the clinic too close to the fire station, you may not be able to place that module on that side. So when you move it, now you know that you can place things around it. So at this point, you can see we have some traffic, a lot of moving trucks coming in. People are trying to get into the residential area. So this is a good time to start thinking about an alternative way into the different neighborhoods. So it should not cost that much we can do a dirt road. Let's curve it and let's bring the dirt road three hundred and ninety nine simoleons. We can afford that. So now we've created another way which should help alleviate some traffic. road grade too steep. So when you have that, you can always just move the road around to see if you can make it work better for you. So let's create another way for our residents, especially our residents at this end of the city. So instead of going here, they're going to go in this direction. And we have an immediate flow of people taking this route. The simulation is always looking for the quickest and shortest route. So when you're laying out your roads, when you're thinking about where do I want to put roads, always think in terms of the simulation is going to try to find the quickest, shortest route 
when you click on road it will show you by color which roads have the most traffic so you're gonna go from no color at all to green to yellow and to red in an early city on dirt roads you're going to have a good amount of red now look at how the red has disappeared here because we've relieved some of that traffic pressure and now that the cars are getting there even this red is subsiding the lower the density the road the less effective the road is so a dirt road is inexpensive but a dirt road is also going to be not very efficient as far as traffic is concerned. This same road layout, if I were using medium density roads, you would have less backups because the cars would be able to travel faster and more efficient. So we've let a nighttime cycle go by. Overnight, our population has gone up. Our funds have gone up, but also we no longer have available jobs for low wealth residents. So let's come here. Let's do more industry. But the other thing that we need to also start thinking about is the fact that as of right now, we only have low wealth residents low wealth eligible workers. So the process of getting medium wealth residents is about you have to change the land value. Changing the land value, so let's go back over to the right, our map, land value map. So as you can see, everything is basically no shade. If you look at the town center, you will see a greenish radius around it. You will see a greenish radius around the clinic and the fire station. There are some items that you place down. They have a positive effect and they can change the land value. Our industrial area is red. It has a negative effect on land value. Briefly, our fire icon changed from this gray to a yellow color. It's letting you know that something is going on and that something is fire. And it's over in the residential area. We have funds. This is a great time to... For 15000 Simoleons, this is a great time to put down another fire truck. Two fire trucks is a good thing to strive for in the early city. One fire truck eventually is going to start to struggle, but now that we've got three, that's going to help. If we want to raise land value and we also need to also affect more services, the police station is something that when you were looking at fire and health, we like putting it over in industry. You want to put police over where your residents are. You have the police station and if you have the... Um, DLC for the French police station, you can use the police station. It will dispatch police a little bit quicker. But let's stick with the base game items. Let's take the police station. It is 30,000. And when we place it, and I do not want to place it I'm trying to avoid placing things on this major road, my major artery. But as you can see, it's allowing me to place it in other places. Since we already have some positive land value, 
based upon the town center. Let's put the police right around here. And now you're going to see an area has now changed color. And some houses almost immediately started to transform. And this house. If you click on the house, you will see that the land value, this is low land value, you will see that this house is now considered in an area of medium land value. Medium land value. So those houses are going to stay single family, but they're going to take up a slightly bigger footprint and they're going to be a little bit better off as far as the look of them. That's an indication that the wealth level in this area has gone up. Hiring, let's click on edit. As you can see, it does not say anything but I still place a sign. Very minimal cost. It's going to make the people feel more secure and it's going to help curb the potential for crime. A little over 3,000 residents. We've not seen a lot from fires we've had two fires but we've been able to save the buildings so the reason why it says zero even though we've seen fires it's going to say zero because our fire trucks were able to get to the fire put the fire out before we lost the home if the fire was burning out of control and because we did not have enough fire trucks or because our fire trucks were stuck in traffic if the house burns down then it would show one building burned down or two buildings burned down traffic is not bad one thing that you want to look at and think about the game is going to generate traffic going to work in the mornings 9 a.m. and it's going to generate traffic 5 p.m. coming home so you're going to have two rush hours a 9 a.m. rush hour and a 5 p.m. rush hour that simple change that we've made has helped alleviate some of our traffic the next thing that I want to focus on is I want enough funds and it can't hurt we are making good hourly income let's take out another bond let's come here click on roads over here where it says road upgrade click on road upgrade and you can click on this and we can upgrade this to low density the traffic is going to move a bit better, a bit more efficient compared to dirt. That's affordable. That's affordable. If you go slow enough, you're going to be earning income while you're doing this. But I want to start the process of turning my major roadway. The longer the road, the more expensive. But I want to turn this from dirt to low density. I'd like to turn this one. And let's take this one. Whoops not do that we can do this one so now my major roadways are going to flow more efficiently my dirt roads are going to be slower but my major arteries at some point we will bulldoze and create a, a 
highway here instead of a road. But as you can see, we have a good start to the city. There are other things that we can do, such as education, mass transit, parks, but we have in place a really good starting foundation to a city. We started out with basic dirt roads. We put down power. We put down water. We took care of sewage. We eventually worked our way up to a town hall. We did garbage. We allowed our funds to build up for fire. Then we went with health. Then we went with police. So our most important power, water, sewage. Second most important after those three, garbage. Then after that, fire, and then health, and then police. And that is a foundation that you can build on. This is a foundation that we can build on moving forward.